you for joining us today on Woodworking with Wes. Today we're going to build charcuterie boards. Charcuterie boards are kind of like a cutting board, only they're larger and used for serving. They've become very popular and we're going to do three different types today. We're going to do one that is a glue up, three quarters of an inch thick. We're going to do one that is a live edge single board and we're going to do one that is thicker inch and a quarter thick of glue up also. We'll so see how this all goes. First part of it is to cut and glue up our glue up parts. Thanks, let's get started. The first part of cutting to glue up is to put a straight edge on each piece by using at the joiner. Here we are. Okay, now we've done our joining and our cutting, and we've laid our parts out so that we can glue up our charcuterie boards, and we've laid them out in a pattern that we like. We've got them both laid here in the pattern that we want, and we'll, now we'll glue them up. And of course, whenever you glue up a breadboard or a charcuterie board, always use waterproof glue. All right, we'll glue up. sure when you do a glue up like this that you have plenty of glue in your joint so that when you uh, put your clamp on you've not got a nice squeeze out all the way along your joint that shows that you have the proper amount of glue you want to make sure you get plenty of glue to have a good strong glue up so We've got a nice squeeze out line all along every joint showing that we have plenty of glue. By putting clamps on both sides of our glue up, we hold our board flat so that it doesn't bow one way or the other with clamps just on one side. I'll show you another trick. When you do your glue, stand it up like this so that as your glue dries, it only drips down the straight line. It's easier to clean. Okay, now that we've jointed, cut, and glued up our other security boards, let's work on our live, our live edge board, single piece. This is a piece of walnut. Live edge is when you leave the natural edge of the uh, lumber. And we're gonna turn this into a security board. So let's talk about how, what we ought to do in order to decide where to cut and what to do. We've got some beautiful grain through the middle. We've got some nice sapwood on the outside. This has a dark streak through the middle of it. Let's see if we can make that the back side. On the front side here, we lose the dark streak. That's great. We still have some nice, beautiful grain here. Nice live edge along here. Let's make this our face side. So let's mark it so we don't lose our face side. We'll put an X. We're gonna be sanding so we'll know. And then let's see how long we should make it. Most charcuterie boards are at least three feet long. Let's see if we can get three feet out of this. Here's our three feet mark right there. And we've got to have a handle at the end. So let's put our handle end up here at three feet. We'll make a notch here so we have a handle. Most charcuterie boards have a handle so you can hold on to it. And then you hold it like that. Let's do that. Let's put our handle here. We'll leave the live edge all along here. Let's trim up this bottom end like this a little bit here, but then we'll leave the rest of it just the way it is. Okay, let's get started. First thing we need to do, go to the chop saw and cut off the end we're not going to use. We need our jigsaw. My hand is probably as good as anybody's hand to judge by. Let's go four inches down. And we're not gonna make this a real accurate cut because we're doing live edge. Let's make this kind of rustic looking. We also want to have 
our handle about an inch and a half wide. So let's do that and that. All right. Good start. Rather than use a sander, we're just going to take a file and kind of rough off the corners a little bit so they're a little not as smooth and, or not as rough. Smooth them up a little bit with just the file. going to do is we're going to fill these cracks and gaps with just regular putty so that it makes the board solid before we put our finish on it. On the cracks that are in the walnut area we have walnut putty. In our lighter areas we're going to use our lighter putty so that the kind of cup matches color because we're not going to be putting any stain on this, just a clear finish that is uh, a breadboard finish. If you look at that crack, you'll notice that it goes deeper than I originally thought. We're gonna dribble a little glue down in there and let that glue dry before we putty so that it stabilizes the ascent of the board. Okay, we're going to have to let that dry for several hours and then come back and do the fill on it. Our glue is dry on our charcuterie boards. We're going to take them out of clamps now and take them over and run them through the planer. We'll scrape off the excess glue. Okay, off to the planer. Now that we've run them through the planer, we'll sand them and then we'll cut them to size. Okay, now we'll cut them to size. We'll start on the chop saw to get a right angle cut on the end. On this board, we're going to put a handle on this end so we can grab onto it. I made this jig that only shows one half. We'll put it, one, we'll put it down and mark it, then flip it. That way it'll be easy, even on both sides. We want the top of our charcuterie board to be 48 inches. So we'll mark that. That's what the top of our board will look like. Right there with a handle. Okay, we'll cut it with a jigsaw first and then sand it on the edge sander. Now we'll sand to the line on our edge sander. Now that we have the handle on this 
board. We're going to turn our attention to the board that was uh, this other board. It's a little thicker and we're going to do a different kind of handle. We're going to drill a hole in this so that we can put our hand through and hold on to it that way. A one and a half inch Forstner bit. We're going to drill two holes and then we're going to connect them by cuts on our jigsaw. Okay, now we'll connect those two holes with our jigsaw. We'll clean up our hole with a file and then we'll route the edges so that it's nice and smooth for your fingers. Okay, we have our boards um, sanded and edged and cut to size and our handles cut and, dr and uh, drilled into them. So now we're going to put uh, an edge on them. On this board, we're going to use a quarter inch round over all the way around both sides. Now we'll change our bit from a quarter inch round over to a three eighths round over and do our thicker board. Now we'll do our final sand all the way around on both of these boards and they're ready for oil. Okay, and just like the flat surfaces we sanded with 120, now we've got to go back and sand the route again with 150. Done. We have one board left that we have to finish sanding and that's our live edge board out of walnut. Um, let's start by working the edge a little bit. I'm going to use a wire brush just to take off any loose edges and then we'll sand it just a little bit. We have our crack that was of a concern and we've got that taken care of and that's all done. So we'll just work the edges and then we'll sand the finish, the faces. We're going to sand this board to 180, so we're at 150 right now. We're going to polish it up 150, and then we'll do a final sand with 180. The reason we're going to do 180 on the walnut is because it really brings out the pretty green. The oil that we're using on this is just mineral oil that you can buy at the store. There are special oils for cutting boards and they're very good, but mineral oil works just as well and it's what I've used for a long, long time. So this is just mineral oil. And it really brings out the color of the wood. One of the reasons we use mineral oil instead of like a, a, a wood oil of some sort is the fact that this is a food surface and mineral oil is non-toxic. So you can use mineral oil on a food surface. Let's clean this up and move on to the next one. Look how that makes that color just pop out. Cherry, walnut, maple.
We'd like to thank you for watching our video on how to build a charcuterie board. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see upcoming videos on how to do things, tricks to learn, and especially how to make beautiful things out of wood. Thank you, and thank you for watching Woodworking with Wes. Wow.